first was thinking about doing boot camps, I thought to myself, like, do I really belong here? And like, is this really the community for me? Um, and as I learned more about JavaScript and like, as I just got, went through this boot camp, I realized like, yeah, definitely. Um, and one of the big like, aspects of that was, was this, request animation frame, AKA RAF. Um, so, so, right, I mean, it's, this is like native to the window object. Like you could, it's a function and um, basically how it's used is um, like, the, so before I get into request animation frame specifically, I wanna talk about browser painting. And browser painting specifically is like when you scroll, the, the browser needs to render like whatever DOM elements are, are gonna appear like below whatever was showing before. Um, and request, anima request animation frame takes advantage of that process. Um, and it lets you um, invoke a function, or it gives, you can give a callback function to the request animation frame, um, and it'll render new changes to the DOM based on um, the function that um, you, you invoke it with. So here's like kind of the recipe for uh, the RAF recipe. So you have a function, um, it's, supposed to, it's supposed to do something, it can be whatever you want, it can change CSS or it can move the element, um, and then you call request animation frame within it, and it kind of does this recursive thing where it'll keep rendering the changes based on whatever function you called. Um, so, what it do? Um, how, does it, how does it work? Um, and I, I wanted to do a, a little code example for you guys. Um, and I thought, what, what better way to do it than like with just a simple triangle? And then I started looking into it and I realized there's a library called Raphael.js. So, um, it seemed appropriate and if, if you're at this point, you're like, I was like totally thinking like, okay, where's my invitation f to the Illuminati? Um, so like, in case the Illuminati's around, like, here I am, man. So I just, so this is a triangle, and um, we're gonna animate it, and um, yeah, so let's just, let's just get into the code. So here's, uh, like the stuff that I have here is just like basic Raphael stuff. This is how you create um, a triangle. Um, and the first thing we want to do is get the triangle. So we're going to do document dot get element by tag name. Um, and this, this is going to render as an SVG. Um, and since this returns an array, um, there's only one SVG, so we're going to take the first one. Then we're going to declare a variable that um, will move our SVG element. And we'll write a function called move triangle that's actually going to um, do the animations. So I want to do triangle dot style dot left um, is going to be equal to the mover. And then I'm going to increment the mover. And within this, I'm going to call request animation frame of that function of move triangle. So pretty much what's happening here is we're, we're declaring a variable outside that's going to increment. Um, and as re request animation frame does like its recursive call, um, it's going to keep moving to the right of the screen. Um, and the last thing that we need to do to really get this hooked up is actually invoke move triangle. So let's do that and let's refresh this and let's just see what happens. So, okay, so what's happening is it's just moving one pixel to the right every time. Um, and that's like the first step to, that's just like a really simple one, right? We can just move, move across the screen. Um, and one of the cool things about request animation frame is that like it, it's really performant. Um, I moved away from that browser, so when I go back, actually the triangle should be in the same spot, um, right? So wherever I left off, the the browser knows like, oh, he's not looking at that window, that part of the window anymore. So I'm not going to keep re-rendering. Um, and we can we can get a little fancier. So let's get a little fancier. Let's do let's make it like spin a little bit, um, and I'll comment this out for now. So let's do spinning string. Um, and I'm going to use the transform variable. It's just like CSS. So uh, the way it works is it's just you do rotate, and then I'm going to do mover dot two string, and then you give it a degree. And this is just like string coercion. It'll print out to rotate parentheses like a number plus degree, and then we can do triangle dot style dot transform is equal to spinning string. And now when we refresh a page, we should have the Illuminati triangle just like spinning around. Okay, so that's cool. Those are like two separate things. 
what we can even do if we want to get crazy is just like put them all together. So we can do both of these things at once. Um, and we can have like a moving spinning thing. So that's like, all right, so now we're like, now we're starting to do stuff, right? So like, let's make this like, let's make this do more. <laughs> so um, the way, like, so this is like the really basic part of request animation frame. Like we're already animating stuff and we're like really close to, to maybe making a game or something like that. We're not gonna make a game now, but we can totally like do some sort of, uh, like we can do like cooler stuff. So if I did var, um, var width is equal to screen dot width, right? Now I can capture, um, I can capture how wide the screen is. And I happen to know that the triangle is um, 300 and like 300 pixels. So I'm just gonna do minus 300 on um, screen width. And we're just gonna put in a couple of if statements. Um, actually, one last thing. I wanna make a variable called reverse, and that's gonna be false for now. And then we're gonna do if width. Actually, if mover is greater than or equal to width. That's, that was a bad way to name that. We're gonna do <laughs> reverse is equal to true. Um, if mover is less than or equal to zero, we're gonna do reverse is equal to false. And then we're gonna move this, the incrementer here, we're gonna move that into more if statements. So if we have, if reverse is equal to false, we want, we want this to increment. Um, Otherwise, if reverse is false, I'm sorry, if, if reverse is true, then we want mover to decrement. So what, it's, what, what this function is gonna do now is it's gonna keep moving and spinning it until it gets to the edge of the screen. And when it gets to the edge of the screen, it'll start moving backwards, hopefully. So um, yeah, so let's just, let's just try it out. Let's see what happens. So let's refresh here. Um, okay. I picked a really small incrementer, so let me just go change that real quick. <laughs> right, so it, it totally knows like when it's at the end and when it's at the beginning, and it'll just keep animating. Um, and this is like a really, like this logic is pretty much the basics of like any sort of game engine or game logic that you might wanna do. You just need like a bunch more if statements. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's pretty much it. Just know that Rafi's here to stay, um, and hopefully you can find your place here too in, uh, in the tech community. Thanks.